Hello everyone, in this video we will be talking about AWS Snapshot. We will be learning about Snapshot and then we will see how to transfer an EBS volume from one region to another region in AWS Cloud. So let's get started. Snapshot. So what is this Snapshot? Snapshots are point-in-time backup of an Amazon Elastic Block Storage. They allow us to preserve the data on an EBS volume even after the volume has been deleted. A snapshot can be used to restore a volume, create a new volume with the same data, or migrate data to another region. Snapshots are stored in Amazon Simple Storage, which is also called as S3, and are incremental, meaning only the changes since the last snapshot are stored. This makes snapshot cost effective and efficient for data backup and disaster recovery. So let's go to our AWS console and let's see how we can create a snapshot. So here currently I am in EC2 service of AWS. So here, first of all, I would be launching an EC2 instance. So let me launch an EC2 instance very quickly. I can click on this launch instance and then I can write the name. For example, I'm writing a name, something like OS1 and then I can select an image. For example, I'm choosing Amazon Linux. Then I can select the instance type. I can select my key pair for now. I am proceeding without a key pair, but you can create a new key and attach to it. After this, I would be going with all the default settings and then I will be launching an instance. When I would be launching an instance, it would be creating automatically an EBS volume behind the scene. So if you come here, then in the volume section, you will see one EBS volume have been created. Now our EC2 instance will take some time to initialize. Till that time, let's create one more EBS volume. So what I will do is I will go to volumes and this is a by default volume or we can say the root volume which has been attached to our EC2 instance. But if we want, then we can create an extra volume. It is very similar to how we use pen drives and how we can attach a pen drive to our system. So what I would be doing here is I would be creating a new volume. So I can click here and I can create a new volume. But here I will have to mention in which availability zone I wanted to create a volume. If I create a volume, let's say in the availability zone 1B and my EC2 instance is running in 1A, then I can't connect this EBS volume to my EC2 instance. So the prerequisite is both the EBS volume and the EC2 instance should be in the same availability zone. I would be cancelling for now. I will first of all check the availability zone in which my EC2 instance has been created. So here you can see it was created in availability zone 1A. So I would be creating a volume and then I will choose the availability zone as 1A and then I can create a volume. Here I can mention about the site. For now I'm going with 1 GB of site and then I can create a volume. Now this will create a volume. It will take some time and it will be created. It is very similar like creating a pen drive. Now we have created this pen drive, but this pen drive is not attached to our EC2 instance. So to attach this volume to our EC2 instance, we can select this, we can go to actions, and then we can click on attach volume. Before that, let's see if our EC2 instance is ready to use. So I will come here, and here you will see our instance is ready to use. So we can click on connect and we can connect to our EC2 instance. Now I can switch to my root user and let me clear my screen. And here if I write a command ftx-l, so it will tell us about all the volumes attached to this EC2 instance. And here you will see we have just one volume attached which has 8 GB of size and it have these partitions. Now let's go back to our console and we will go to volumes and then we will attach this volume to our EC2 instance. We can click on attach volume. We can select our EC2 instance. And as this EC2 instance is running in 1A, so we can easily find this out. If this was running in 1B, then I can't select this EC2 instance. So I will select this and then I will click on attach volume and that's it. It will attach this extra 1 GB of space to our EC2 instance. It is very similar like a pen drive. We have attached this pen drive to our EC2 instance. Now if I go back to my EC2 console and if I run here the same command, so you will see now it has detected 
two volumes, one with a size of 8 GB and one with a size of 1 GB. But you will see it don't have any partition. It, so we will have to create a partition from our side because we are using EBS volume elastic block storage. So how to do that? It is quite simple. We can come here and we can write a command app disk and then we will be writing here our disk name, which is Dave X V D app, and that's it. So here I will write N and means a new partition which we want. And then I want a primary partition. So I will write P. Then I will go with by default partition number. And after this, I would be writing W, which means save this partition. And that's it. It's been done. Now if I write aptx hyphen L command, so you will see a partition have been created. And here you can see the size of partition and all the other details. Now after creating the partition, we will have to format it. So for formatting, I would be using here a formatting type. And then I can mention about my partition, which is Dave XVDF1. And that's it. We are done with the partition and formatting, but now we will have to mount this disk to any particular folder. For that, I would be creating here a new folder. So let me go to the slash directory. And here I can create a folder, for example, new hard disk. And then I can mount my partition, which is the XVDF1 to this particular directory. And that's it. Now if I write a command df-h, so you will see this device have been mounted to this directory. And now if I go to new hard disk, so here I can create multiple files. For example, I'm creating a file, for example, version1.txt. And here I can write, for example, one. And that's it. So now if I do cat version 1.txt, so you will see uh, one have been stored here. And if I do ls, so you will see I have created a file v1.txt in my new hard disk of one GB size, which we have created here. So this is how it works. Now let's say I want a backup of this particular hard disk. So how I can do that? So for that case, I can select this hard disk and then I can go on actions and then I can say I wanted to create a snapshot. We have already seen the definition of snapshot. It will help us in backup. So let me create a snapshot from here. So I will have to write some description if I want. So I can write my first snapshot and then I can create a snapshot. So it would be creating a snapshot for us. And if you want to see it, so you can come here and you can go to this snapshot console. And here you will see one snapshot would be creating. It will take some time, but it would be created in few minutes. So you will see a snapshot have been created with the size one GB. So that's good. That's looking good, right? Now let's say, for example, after creating the snapshot, my user creates a more file, for example, version two dot txt. And with the data, let's say, for example, 2222. And like this, let's say uh, he has created now a version 2.txt file also. If I do ls, so now it have version 1.txt and it have v2.txt. For example, I have created two files. So you, we can see now our EBS volume, which we have created. So if I go to volumes, so the volume of 1 GB size, which we have created now in this volume, we have two files. But the snapshot which we have created from this volume few minutes back, it just have this one file. So for the backup purpose, what we normally do is we keep on doing the backup so that we don't lose any new data. So for example, let's say after doing this, I think it is a very important data. So I can come to my volumes. I can click on action and then I can create one more snapshot. It will create one more backup or we can say it will create version two of the backup. So let me create a snapshot and here I can write, for example, my second snapshot and then I can create a snapshot. So like this, we can keep on creating multiple snapshots. And now if I go to a snapshot, then you will see now we have two snapshots. In both of them, it is showing size 1 GB and you will see it is my first snapshot and this is my second snapshot. Now, let's say my user wanted to create some more files so my user can create one more file and so on. So I hope this concept is clear. 
And that's all for this video. We will be seeing a lot more about snapshots in our next part of this video, where we will be covering how to transfer an EBS volume from one region to another region, how to create an EBS volume back from a snapshot. And we would be also covering a lot of myths about snapshot. So we will join you in the next part. Thanks for watching.